Hello, my name is Tao, and I'm a student from California North State University College of Pharmacy, class of 2023. In this video, I will be talking about azenapine. Azenapine comes in two formulations, sublingual tablet, or commonly known as saffris, or and topical patches, uh, or commonly known as sequadro. Each has its own unique administration technique. For sublingual tablet or saffris, you will let the tablet dissolve under your tongue. Um, it should only take a few seconds to completely dissolve. Avoid drinking and eating for at least 10 minutes after taking the medication. Take the tablet out of its, its original packaging by peeling off the backing, but do not push the tablet through the foil packaging to avoid breaking the tablet. Um, the tablet should not be split, crushed, chewed, or swallowed. <clears throat> Azenapine is also available as a topical patch or sequado is a brand of the medication. When you're ready to apply the patch, open the pouch and apply one patch to clean, dry, intact skin of the arm, upper back, abdomen, or hip. Take off sequado and replace with, new, with a new patch every 24 hours. It's important that you only apply one patch at a time to avoid overdosing and uh, apply at a different site each day. These patches should not be cut to avoid losing the medication and do not apply external heat after you apply sequadro. While wearing sequadro, you can take a shower as you normally would, but avoid swimming and bathing while wearing it. After 24 hours, you can dispose of the product by folding the used patch so that the adhesive size sticks to itself and discard in a dedicated medicine disposal box in certain hospital and pharmacies. So just a little bit of an introduction about azenapine. Uh, it is a second generation antipsychotic and they come in either a transdermal system or sublingual tablets. Generic uh, version is only available for sublingual tablets formulation. Both formulations come in three different strengths for titration. The Safras brand tablet also comes in black cherry flavor. The exact mechanism of azenapine and its therapeutic effect in vitro is unknown, but it is thought to antagonize both the dopamine and serotonin receptors, whereas first-generation antipsychotic only affects the dopamine receptor. Its pharmacodynamic data suggests that there's a high affinity for various serotonin, dopamine, alpha-adrenergic, and histamine receptors. Some advantages to taking azenapine is that it is available in both topical and oral formulations. There are less extraparameter symptoms associated in general as with other second generation antipsychotic um, medications. Compared to other medications in this class, azenapine is less li likely to cause weight gain. The medication can be used in both adults and pediatric patients of 10 years and older. Some disadvantages include the lack of long-acting injectable options for this medication and it is also quite expensive at about $20 to $50 per dose, which can translate to a, over $1,000 for a month's supply. Azenapine is indicated to treat bipolar disorder and schizophrenia in adults. Doses usually start with 5 mg sublingual tablet twice daily with a maximum daily dose of 10 mg twice daily. Transdermal patch is only approved to treat schizophrenia at the low, lowest dose and then uptitrate based on response and tolerability after one week. In pediatric patients, azenapine is only approved for use in bipolar disorder for children 10 to 17 years old with acute mania or episodes with mixed features. Starting dose is lower than that of the adults at 2.5 mg sublingual tablet twice daily, and then uh, titrate up to a maximum of 10 mg twice daily at every three days increments at tolerated. Discontinuing the antipsychotic is generally not recommended, but if the patient needs to be discontinued, then it is recommended to gradually taper the dose to detect reemergence of symptoms and avoid withdrawal reactions. To withdraw the patient from azenapine, there are two proposed strategies by Lexicomp. Patient can down titrate one antipsychotic agent 
while of titrating the other. For patients with higher risk of relapse, they can stay at the same dose of the old antipsychotic and then gradually up titrating the new antipsychotic and then switch the tapering process when adequate response is achieved with the new antipsychotic. The use of any xenapine product is contraindicated in patients with severe hepatic impairments, such as those with child pill class C, and any patients with hypersensitivity reaction to xenapine or its component is contraindicated to use. There is a black box warning with any second generation antipsychotic uh, when it is used in elderly patients with dementia related psychosis because um, it puts them at an increased risk of death. Here's a look at some of the adverse reactions that may be experienced by patients who are on the centipede. They include drowsiness, insomnia, extraparameter reaction, headache. Uh, metabolic side effects are common as well, such as increased in serum glucose, triglycerides, and cholesterol. Some other less common but still uh, serious side effects include orthostatic hypotension, hepatotoxicity, QT prolongation, or proarrhythmic effects, skin rash, or mood disorder may occur as well. Patients who are on azinapine may experience some drug interactions, especially if they have other conditions that require treatment. Um, for example, patients on antihypertensive agents may experience more hypotension episode if they're taking it together with azinapine. Therefore, um, the patients need to be counseled to monitor their blood pressure regularly. In addition to that, azinapine is also a substrate of CYP1A2 enzyme. Um, so when taken together with strong COYP1A2 inhibitors, such as fluvoxamine, azenapine dose may need to be reduced. And for those patients who are also taking um, CYP2D6 inhibitor or substrate, such as paroxetine, um, th those adjustments may be necessary. And that concludes my presentation about azenapine. Thank you for tuning in.